Hello and welcome to Bike Social, also welcome to Silverstone. I'm Michael Mann and this is our top track day tips for beginners. So in the UK alone there are 17 circuits where you can take a bike on track and some of those have got different variations of circuit layout like here at Silverstone you've got national, international and the Grand Prix circuit. So there's plenty of opportunity to take your bike on track in a safe environment with nothing coming the other way and at speeds higher than the national speed limit. And there are plenty of track day operators in the UK as well, MSVR, California Superbike School, No Limits, Focused Events and here at Silverstone they run their own track day so again so plenty of variation, plenty of different operators offering on different circuits. So I'm now joined by Andrew Lucky. Andrew's a relative newcomer to track day riding. Andrew, welcome. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. Tell me a little bit about your track day history so far. Cool. So um, I started track riding in October last year. It's always something that I wanted to do. Um, but I had uh, a road going Ninja 636, which I didn't really want to take on track. So I was on an iron whether to do it or not. Um, but I decided to bit the, bite the bullet and uh, take it on track. Once I'd done that track day, I needed a, a bike solely for that job. Um, so I found uh, an SB650, um, which was a road-going version, but I'm gradually kind of changing it into uh, a track bike. Get to know the bike, get to feel it a little bit, see what, see what needs to improve and see what's good. Um, and yeah, now we're here at Silverstone. So tell me about that first day at Snetterton. What, how did you feel about it going into it? Did you get um, apprehensive, nervous, adrenaline? Uh, yeah, a bit of everything, really. People turn up who are in the fast group and then they've got all the kit. Um, they've, you know, fully prepared race bikes. They've got vans, tools, the, the lot. But when you're first starting out, you don't, you don't need that. But you kind of turn up, um, find yourself space but everyone there is really really helpful happy to you know lend your hand or if you haven't got a tool that you need they're happy to do that and then once you kind of get down pit lane and go out for your first lap and yeah feel good you kind of settle in and the adrenaline kind of settles down a little bit and you just kind of find your flow it becomes very expensive doesn't it because once you've been on one track day you want to do a whole host more that's the thing yeah so uh, yeah like i mentioned i kind of got the bug bought the bike now and uh, like i say i want to kind of do some upgrades and things so you're here at silverstone it's your third ever track day ever 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 what kind of experience can you bring to a track day that you think a passive an absolute newcomer might want to learn want to know i think uh, a good mindset to come into a track day is that you're not going to set any lap records but actually kind of being quick in the corners and trying focusing on your body positioning and, and learning that i think will kind of help you improve and become a bit of a better rider all right, cool. So if you're an absolute newcomer, uh, here's some top tips um, for what not to forget and what to prep. Okay, so you've booked yourself a spot on the track day and there's lots of things to remember. First of all, how are you going to get there? It's really important because the track day operators will want you there usually by about 7 a.m., 7.30. So your options are, well, you can obviously can ride your own bike there, or if you've got the use of a van or a trailer, then get it prepped the night before. The alternative, of course, is to stay locally. Now, whether you can camp on site, a lot of circuits will allow you to do that, or stay in a hotel. If you're not gonna use uh, your own bike on circuit, um, there's always options with track day operators offering higher bikes. They offer anywhere from a 600 through to a thousand cc, uh, depending on, on the operator and the circumstances, but make sure you book well in advance. Here's the rest of the list. So what are you going to wear on track? Well, you'd normally wear on a circuit, you need leathers, don't you? So whether you're going for a one-piece or a two-piece, remember that two-piece has got to zip together all the way around, not just at the back. What else are you going to need? Boots, make sure they've got plenty of protection, plenty of flexibility as well. Gloves, again, it's got to come up over the cuff. If it's going to be sunny, you want to take your dart visor. You're going to ride home in the dark, make sure you've got your clear visor as well. A balaclava if you ride one of those underneath, or even an earplug, it's essential really. Back protector, that's the one, that's the key. Always pack your pack protector as well. Driving license, you won't be riding without it and you will need to show it to the organisers on arrival. Paperwork, you'll be sent some before the day with do's and don'ts and an idea of where to go on arrival as well as approximate timings. Read it understand it and try and fill in the bits beforehand to save you a lot of time. There's likely to be a lot of people milling around trying to get their paperwork signed off. So if you've got it yours done, you can get straight to the front of the queue. Fuel, either top up your tank before you get to the circuit, or if there's an opportunity to take some additional fuel with you in the appropriate containers, then do so. Most circuits will provide fuel, but you pay for the convenience. A top tip actually would be to only add enough fuel for each session, thus keeping the weight of the bike down. Tires, brakes, chain, just check your tires, check for tread, check for wear, check for pressures. On your chain, check for the tension, make sure it's well oiled, and your brakes as well. You're gonna be using your brakes a hell of a lot harder on track than you would ever do on a road, so make sure you've got plenty of wear left in your pads. Noise, often an issue on track days. A track day will have a, a maximum static noise limit and a drive-by limit. They'll check for static and it's usually around 102 decibels. 
So if you've got an aftermarket exhaust, check the noise level before you go just in case, and at least take a baffle with you if it's not already fitted. Water and food, it's really, really key to stay hydrated. So take loads of water with you, and there'll be a cafe or a restaurant on site if you haven't. Equally, the same with food. Little and often is the key here. Don't fill up on all sorts of chips and burgers at lunchtime. You'll feel horrible by the time it gets to your first afternoon session. A change of clothes on a warm day or even a wet day. You'll want to slip out of your leathers and put some clothes on either at lunchtime or when you're ready to leave the track. Seating, it might seem like a daft one, but again, if you've got a car on a trailer, a van on a trailer, or just a van, then, then try and take a seat with you. You, know, you can sit down between sessions, take the weight off, relax. You use a lot of energy when you're on track riding around, you know? And duct tape. A lot, of, a lot of track day operators will ask you to fold in your mirrors or tape them up, as well as your headlights, and as well as remove your registration plate. Some don't mind, some do. I would prefer to have my mirrors open. Now the advice is that generally they say don't look in your mirrors, only look ahead. But I would always have a little glimpse now and again. Equally brake lights, I always leave mine open. I'd want people to know when I was braking. So we happen to have the access to the bike social van, so I'm gonna put the BMW S1000RR into the van. Here are a few tips to the way I would do it. There's a lot of variations on how people might do it depending on what kind of van you've got, what kind of straps you've got to tie down. This is the, what I prefer to do. First up, I tend to use the engine power to get it up the ramp. Why not? First gear, away we go. It's gently, I'm not even accelerating. I'm just using the clutch, finding the bike point, a little bit of gas, up the ramp, against the bulkheads. I leave the bike in first gear, I put the side stand down, and what I've done is I've got a side stand here so it's not damaging the floor of the van. All right, so you can see the bike's not quite straight, but that's deliberate on two parts. One, obviously, it's going to be leaning to the left because it's on the side stand. Two, I need to be able to get my ramp in, and it's quite a sizable ramp. It's not a foldable one, and it's solid. So I've got plenty of space down the right-hand side for my ramp. Uh, I've done it before. I've got a bike in. I've ratcheted it down with four different straps, and I've had left myself no space to get the ramp in. Um, so the key here is be careful. Flip it on its back and line it up against the tires. No damage done to anything. All right, next up, we're gonna ratchet strap these, this bike down. Now, what I'm gonna do is I've got four ratchet straps, one in each corner. You can get away with only two. However, I've got four, so I might as well use them just to be really safe. Using the hooks, the hook eyes on here, make sure you've got a nice, straight, untangled piece of strap. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up underneath the fairing, go over the top yoke, and then come back down again the same way. There's a couple of things you've got to look out for here. One, when I put it up here, there's nothing blocking the way, like brake leads. So I'm going to fold it over the top of the, top of the handlebars there, and then come back down. I'm going to avoid any leads. Feed it through, feed it through. And what a good tip here is, if it is going to be rubbing on some of the fairing, for example, under here, you don't want to be damaging that, get a few rags out. Got a nice little yellow one here. Put it in there, and we're keeping the fairing nice and intact here, keeping it flat, you don't want any knots, keeping it touch tight, and then just give it a few clicks so it starts to pull there. We don't want to get anything too tight just at this stage, we need to get all four in place, then tighten it up to a nice sensible degree. Then when we can, before we set off for the circuit in the morning, we can get it nice and tight and the bike's squat. And then click it down. Okay, so I've now got four straps that are tight enough to keep the bike in place overnight. Uh, and what I need to do is just tighten those up in the morning to make sure that the bike's nice and sturdy. And then I can pack my belongings around it. So if I'm taking fuel, if I'm taking water, my leathers, helmet, and so on, they can be packed in around the bike and I'm not disturbing the straps. I'll tighten those up before I go and uh, we'll see you at the circuit. Mate, blue groups out at the moment, they're the intermediate boys. So uh, you're up next, are you happy? Yep. You're fresh? Yep. You're feeling, you feeling keen? Yep, definitely, bike's fueled up. Um, That's a good point, yes. Yeah. So you've got fuel in it, you haven't brimmed yeah. it, have you? you haven't no, got a, nah, no, good plan. Half, half, half full. That's the best bit of advice I give you, just, just take it nice and easy yep. for session one. So get your eye in, yep. find out where the circuit flows, yep. where your braking points are perhaps. Just how the bike reacts to the surface and the circuit, get used to it. Great. Mate, you'll have a great time. Thanks, Thank you very much. Go and enjoy it. Cheers. Lots of difficulties, such a long lap, obviously.
It's big yeah, circuit. It's big it's circuit. It's over three and a half miles. It's the longest one of the DD Cup. Yeah. You know, towards the end, kind of got to know a bit more breaking points and, and turning and stuff. So yeah, good. Really good. Good, Hot. mate. <laughs> right, yeah. Get plenty of water in. I, yeah. uh, I can't. I can't tell you how much water you're going to need yeah. today. Food-wise, little and often. Yes. Get loads, yeah. loads in. Cause you'll, yeah. Again, you'll burn all the carbs, and you'll because of the because of the, the nerves or, yeah. or feeling a bit anxious or excited, the adrenaline's pumping. Yeah. Exactly. You won't. You won't remember to eat. And and here, don't eat masses all at once. But little and often, loads of water. Excellent. So I'm here with Taylor McKenzie, British Super Stock 1000 champion 2016, all right? All around nice guy, he paid me to say that, and for today, uh, and for many other days, Silverstone Masterclass Instructor. So, Taylor, what, if you've got a new guy coming along, new girl coming along, that's her first ever time on track, well, how do you sort of get them bedded in? The more information you give a new person on track, the worse it is, because there's a lot going on when you first get out there. There's people overtaking you, there's the circuit in general, which you've not been around. Normally, I let them do the first session, get a feel for the track, feel for their bike. We gradually build up during the day. The first thing I normally work on is people's lines, because if they've not been on a track before, that's one of the first things you need to work on. So make sure you're using all of the track. Um, and then I go into things like body position, making sure they're sitting in the right place on the bike. There's throttle control, braking, there's lots you can get into after that, but um, generally where you are on the track and where you're sat on the bike, they're two quite important things that are different to riding on the road. Have you any advice for people who are thinking about uh, perhaps booking their first ever track day? Is there something that you would say to them other than go and do it? Just go and pick a track near you, find a yeah, anyway, there is no bad track in the UK or abroad, so just go and buy something sensible if you haven't got a track bike, take your road bike, there is no rules really, just go and do what, what makes you happy and uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll have a, a good day. Is there any tips and advice that you would have for people who are super keen, super, where well, they want to do the knee down thing or they want to go fast around this corner? Uh, do you have to rein them in sometimes? Yeah, I, again, I just try and pick one thing and work on that one thing because there's lots of advice you can give a new rider. Each time I send a new rider out, I only ever give them one or two things at the most to work on because generally you can tell them three things and they can repeat those three things to you now whilst we're talking and then the second you put a helmet on, you get out of pit lane. The, it all goes out the window. Keep ticking little boxes and before you know it, you'll all those boxes add up and you'll be going a lot faster and be a lot safer on track. And you become addicted to track days and spend lots of money. Correct, and, uh... and then you'll be skinned. So <laughs> Maybe no, not too many goals. Skin, goals, skin, goals. Super job, thank you so much. No nice worries, one. thanks. So, Mr. Andrew, we are looking at the video footage from the session after lunch where I joined you on track. I followed you, I had a little drift camera on there, I had it at an angle where I could see you, I tried to stay with you. <laughs> I was really, really impressed. Let's, we're on your outlap here. Body position's good, you look aggressive. You know, it's a physical act. We know this, it's been a super hot day. Um, and we've been working hard. Riding a bike on a circuit can be a, a very physical thing. So you've got a really good position. You're crouching nicely, it ath looks athletic. You're dispatching with some of the slower riders really well with great confidence. And considering this is, you know, one of your first ever track days, yeah. mate, you won't be in the novice group for long. Oh, hopefully not, with not. This, that's, that's the aim. <laughs> not with this kind of uh, technique. Great move up the inside here. Still sitting in the middle of the road here, uh, I'd have been using, you can almost straight line this, and you have done to a degree, back in, missed the apex a little bit, but that's stuff you can work on. You can tell you've ridden, you've got experience on a motorbike. But something you said to me earlier on was um, you learnt the circuit by playing a video game. <laughs> yeah, so I've got the MotoGP um, PlayStation 4 game, uh, and actually the, the layout's the same, and, and actually the, some of the characteristics are uh, really realistic, um, so just, not not for kind of breaking points and stuff like that, but just direction of the track and where it goes and kind of how it flows. Did you feel uh, it kind of? Yeah, it really did. Yeah, I'd mentioned YouTube earlier on in the video about um, you know, it was a, a really good thing to to learn the circuit or to look at the circuit before you go. Yeah. It's another good thing to learn. Yeah, keep it up, keep practicing. Make sure you use the riding instructors as well. Uh, it'd be, it, it's ideal. They're they're there. there. You know, they they are at track days for a reason, you might as well make the most of them. I think they're only, only too happy to help as well. Yep. And they might give you so, something, you know, absolutely, some real key advice. Um, Even in kind of the briefings and a few conversations kind of overheard when they were talking about body position and things like that, just little bits you can pick up, I found really useful and I tried to implement whilst it's on the, on, the, on the track. One of the best bits of advice I could give you is to keep it smooth, keep calm, yep. plan ahead, yep. like you would on the road. 
patience is the key. Use the instructors. They're there for a reason. They'll help with any questions on and off track. And one of the top ones is that if you ever find yourself thinking about something else other than the next corner or the next opponent, come in, because yeah. you're, lose, you're losing concentration. Absolutely, yeah. Good, well, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been fantastic, yeah. Is there anything you want to you wanna get out of your next time? Anything you're sort of planning on? I think for next time, body position, breaking points. And also another thing I actually didn't mention earlier was uh, throttle control in the corners, not being kind of on and off, on and off, and being smooth in those corners just to help you kind of turn and, and get a good exit. There you have it, mate. It's always going to be a good day to track day. All right, we've been through a whole host of information. There's a lot to take in when you're considering coming on track for the first ever time, but don't worry. Just take it step by step. Anyone and everyone should be on track at some point in their lives and I urge you all to have a go. Enjoy.